So, you've been enjoying Resident Evil Village? Eight? Whichever you prefer. Great. I've been as well. So, uh, who's your favorite character? Are you simping for Lady Dimitres? Uh, maybe you're one of those weird people who loves Lord Moreau. Don't worry, I won't judge. Just, you don't have to tell me about your weird fish fantasies in the comment section. Well, whichever Lord you find to be your favorite, there's one rising star who's beginning to shine infinitely brighter than any of the other characters in Resi 8. Now that people have had time to sit down with the game proper, a lot of people are starting to show their love for Lord Carl Heisenberg. Well, well. I didn't think anyone was left. You must be pretty tough. Huh. Now, from this point on, consider this video to be a spoiler-ridden hellhole. And if you're not here for that, then maybe head out now, and I'll see you in another video. Maybe I'll see you over on, a uh, Sunset City? Alright, now that the warning's out of the way, let's get into exactly why people are getting highs and boners. Play the clip. What the hell? Mia? Truth hurts, don't you? <sighs> Let me guess. You're thinking, take me out like the others, and then he gets to go and save Rose, right? I'm healing my daughter. Look, you, you, you got the soul wrong. Don't Shut your fucking hole! I'm sorry. Take a seat. Listen, Ethan, you're being played. What are you talking about? You think this is a game? I said sit! <sighs> Lady, super-sized bitch. Ugly, a psycho doll. An ironic freak. It's a test. To see if you're strong enough to be a part of Miranda's family. I don't want to be a part of Miranda's family. Neither did I, but here we are! An unextra lion, right? Kill me, move up the chain, well fuck this! I don't give a damn about your personal issues. I just want to fix my daughter. <laughs> so do I. Do you have any idea how powerful a kid is? Even Miranda's scared of her. Last time, you freak! I swear to God! You and me, Ethan. Together, we can go save Rose, and we can use her to grind Miranda into paste. My daughter is not a weapon. Fuck you! Last chance. You don't want to find out what's in that hole. I'll take my chances. You're few. So, if you just experienced this moment, it's almost as if Ethan's the one being unreasonable. I mean, after all, during the end, Rose's powers are still used to weaken Mother Miranda, and Heisenberg did argue that he wants to take her out, as well as save Rose too. Is Ethan Winters being unreasonable in refusing Lord Carl Heisenberg? Would there have been room for a possible alliance with this Magneto wannabe? Well, we should probably dig a little deeper into Heisenberg as a character, the inspirations behind his character, what he was doing, and... Well, if an alliance with him could have even been possible, but history first, fun stuff later. Lord Karl Heisenberg's namesake was taken from the Nobel Prize winning German scientist Werner Karl Heisenberg, while his aesthetics were lifted directly from Van Helsing. Now, the Van Helsing attire fits well with the theme of the game, and given that he has control over the various lichens in the local region, it's perfectly fitting and makes sense. That's not as interesting as the actual name, though, so let's go ahead and explore who Heisenberg's namesake derives from, as it gives us a good bit of insight into his character. You see, Werner Karl Heisenberg was a German theoretical physicist, and one of the key pioneers of quantum mechanics, 
Heisenberg was awarded the 1932 Nobel Prize in Physics for the creation of quantum mechanics. Heisenberg also made important contributions to the theories of hydrodynamics of turbulent flows, the atomic nucleus, ferromagnetism, cosmic rays, and subatomic particles. Ferromagnetism is the one we're going to be focusing on right now, though. It's the basic mechanism by which certain materials, such as iron, form permanent magnets, or are attached to magnets. In physics, several different types of magnetism are distinguished. Ferromagnetism, though, is the strongest kind, and it's responsible for the common phenomena of magnetism in magnets encountered in everyday life. Why does this matter, though? Why am I going into all this scientific mumbo-jumbo? Well, what's Heisenberg's power? Who the fuck are you? Oh, you're not local. Even better. Ah! Mother Miranda is gonna love you. Haha, <laughs> 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 now that's metal. Alright, now that you're done crucifying me for that joke in the comments, uh, let's continue. Carl Heisenberg, the real one, not the video game character, was a devout Christian once saying that we can console ourselves that the good lord would know the position of subatomic particles, and thus he would let the causality principle continue to have validity. Even arguing to Albert Einstein that quantum physics, as a theoretical field, is incomplete so long as it implies the universe is indeterminate at a fundamental level. If something's indeterminate, that basically just means that its fate is not set in stone. Given that Heisenberg was a devout Christian, and one of the principles commonly attributed to the Christian god is that of omniscience, or literally knowing everything, one would then conclude that all events in the universe are already predetermined. The only way to have perfect knowledge that something is going to happen is if those events are already predetermined. But how does this relate back to our Lord Carl Heisenberg, this time the video game character? Well, if you remember the scene I played earlier, Carl is very interested in changing his fate. The ideas of Carl Heisenberg in real life imply someone interested in the idea of determinism, and very interested in the universe following those laws. It was, after all, one of the reasons he held issue with current theories about quantum mechanics. Remember that determinism is the doctrine that all events, including human action, are ultimately determined by causes external to one's will. Some philosophers have taken determinism to apply that individual individual human beings have no free will, and cannot even be held morally responsible for their actions. While the real-life Carl Heisenberg seems to have cozied up to this idea through a mixture of science and theology, our video game counterpart seems to reject the hand that life has dealt him. In fact, one of the quotes he says in-game is honestly very telling as to what his personal ideology is. I'm not like my siblings. I want nothing more than to be free of that bitch. So I need power. I need enough power to destroy her. These are the fruits of my power. The strong will destroy the weak. That's the way of the world. You should have never refused me, Ethan. You see, for as powerful as Carl is, he was kidnapped and subjected to experimentation with the Kadu parasites of Mother Miranda in order to get there. But in his own words, he's not like his other siblings. You see, this all happened because Mother Miranda had a quest to revive her own dead daughter. Heisenberg was the only one who ended up holding a grudge against Mother Miranda due to what he perceived as her own selfish desire to revive her late daughter, through the experiments done on him and the other lords. We come now to the point where Heisenberg's story is one about trying to reject his fate, not being comfortable with the idea of determinism, wanting to forge his own path free of the shackles of the village's god since Mother Miranda is, well, the religious figure of the local area. Everyone in the village worships her as though she were a god. And, well, unlike the devoutly religious determinist his namesake stems from, he tries to reject his religion and tries to cast off the deterministic shackles that were thrown on him by Mother Miranda. All of this should make him a very sympathetic and relatable character, right? 
I mean, with all of this information, certainly there's no reason Ethan shouldn't have tried to work with this guy. After all, they've got a common enemy, a common enemy who's puppeteering both of their fates. But you see, Heisenberg's a bit of a complex character, and with all complex characters, there's usually a darkness waiting to be discovered. So, let's jump right into that. If we inspect Heisenberg's character model, we find some, uh, very telling things. Of course, we see his iconic hammer that is so iconic he never uses it in-game, uh, but if we look a little closer, we see these dog tags on his person. And I know what you're thinking, dog tags? Oh no, he's ex-military, so what? Uh, well, you see, Mother Miranda's been around for a very long time. She is incredibly old, over a hundred years old, mind. She predates the formation of even the Umbrella Corporation. So, uh, what kind of military specifically did Heisenberg belong to? Well, you see, he's been part of the family for a very long time. In fact, he's probably been a member since World War II. You see, Heisenberg's dog tag is the same dog tag used by the SS. This implies that Heisenberg is a former Nazi soldier, and it's not just in his aesthetics that we come to this conclusion. You see, Heisenberg isn't just obsessed with unraveling the shackles of fate that he's bound by, he's also obsessed with the creation of the Übermensch. What is the Übermensch? Well, it's a concept in the philosophy of Friedrich Nietzsche, in his 1883 book, Thus Spoke Zarathustra, which I am definitely mispronouncing, Nietzsche has his character Zarathustra posit that the Übermensch is a goal for humanity to set for itself. Basically, humanity should try for the goal of creating superhumans for, well, a variety of reasons. Nietzsche is a complicated character with a very interesting philosophy I've delved into on another video on a separate channel, but we're not going to delve any further into him right now. We want to take this ideology and see how it specifically manifested during the time that Heisenberg would have been working for the SS. Well, you don't need to be a history major to remember that the Nazis had a eugenics program that they engaged in during the time of World War II. Based on these dog tags, we can conclude that Heisenberg isn't just a follower of these age-old principles, he likely actively took part during the eugenics experimentation that the Nazis engaged in during the Second World War. Which means this guy has participated in human experimentation going back decades, as well as participating in local genocide. Pretty dark stuff, but this is Resident Evil. Heisenberg is constantly trying to create this Superman, this Übermensch, through experimentation in his factory. Uh, let's read a couple of the writings he has on the matter, as well as listen to the words from the man's own voice. Medical log. Revitalization surgery. This is my 18th attempt. The subject is Oscar the Stable Boy, 20 years old. He fell down the well while drunk. Body is in good condition. Chest incision complete. Now to remove the heart and vital organs and implant the control device. Excellent. Cadeau has begun adhering to the nervous system. It's progressing even faster than before. It seems upping the ratio of meta-albumin in the artificial blood was the right choice. Now to pass a current through the brainstem using 6,600 volts. Come on. It has to work this time. Yes. Yes! Ha 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 ha! Wonderful! My creation! At last! I'll get that bitch yet. Ha 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 ha! Ending recording. There's also Heisenberg's diary for context as well. Miranda is abominable. Her deceit knows no bound. We're merely a bunch of failed Kado experiments to her. And I was just lucky I had more affinity to the stuff than the other poor schmucks in the village. So she still calls me her son. What a joke. I'll never forgive her for what she did to me. That crazy bitch has never been a right in the head. She can't see a difference between experiment and family. Miranda didn't just change my body, she took my dignity. 
If I don't kill her, then my life will never be my own. Still, she may be crazy, but she's also powerful. She can turn into anyone using the Mega Munch seat. The trick is that Brat Rose. If I could just access her power, then maybe... Speaking of, the kid's dad, Ethan, has a pretty interesting body himself. Maybe I could get him to help me out. Development Note 1, version 1.0. Mechanical soldier sold it. Fully grown male corpse used. Remove heart and implanted kado. Muscle stimulation via electric shock was successful. Brain dead, so no high cognitive ability. Only moves by destructive instinct, then stops. Sold it version 1.1. Attached headgear to the cranium. Electrodes confirm stable brainwaves. Experiment 1, lichen fight. Was dismantled and eaten within three minutes. Issues with destructive and murderous capabilities. Sold it version 1.10. Replaced lower part of arm with drill. Not enough output for effective movement. Me live bodies, perhaps? Sold it version 1.15. Implanted Kado reactor into the chest. Output greatly increased. Experiment 2 Lichen Fight. Destroyed three lichens in one minute. Good results, but issues with reactor durability may stop functioning if reactor is destroyed. And here is the actual monster that he had created. Remember, though, that the lichens were also created from the villagers, so the bodies just keep on piling up with this guy. He needs villagers to create the cadavers that he implants the electrodes in to create his monstrosities, and he needs more villagers in order to test them in battle. He continues, Development Note 2. Sold it enhancement? Sold it jet. Attached a jetpack to the head stabilizers to assault it. Experiments prove limited flight capabilities. No long distance flight, but now possible to navigate rugged terrain. Sold it enhancement, sold it panzer. Attached aluminum alloy shielding to a sold it to protect chest reactor and exposed flesh. Experimentation proves he is invincible against regular firearms. Armor doesn't hold up against strong blasts. Further development needed. You can see through all of this that he's constantly trying to improve these mechanical soldiers in order to eventually use them against Mother Miranda. Each of these experiments is an attempt for Heisenberg to further build his army of super soldiers, the direct use case for these obviously being to kill Miranda, but what then? What purpose could Heisenberg use these super soldiers for after that battle? Even if he came out on top, thinking on it, if he's an ex-SS soldier, if he's consistent with that Nazi ideology going forward, this man would likely use his super soldiers to try to take over the world. He even mentioned using Ethan's daughter Rose's power with no regard to her personal agency, so he's certainly got no problem with authoritarianism, so long as he's the one in charge. At the end of the day, while he may have seemed a lot more relatable and even considerate towards Ethan in their first interaction in the factory, Heisenberg is nothing short of a monster with thousands, if not millions, of bodies piled under him, all in the name of his own personal agency and a morose application of science. But what if we had? What if, in this moment, Ethan had actually formed an uneasy alliance with Heisenberg? Well, timing issues aside, I don't think this could have lasted very long at all. You see, there are problems with Heisenberg's toxic ideology, but there's another factor to consider, and that's Chris Redfield. You see, unbeknownst to Heisenberg or Ethan, or even the player, Chris Redfield had been under the factory the whole time, rigging everything to explode, even putting together a polymer tank that Heisenberg wouldn't be able to control with his electromagnetism in order to finish him off. Any alliance Ethan made with Heisenberg would have been dashed the moment that first explosion happened. And once the tank is rolled out, Heisenberg's smart enough to know who it's for, and it would all go downhill from there. Which means, unfortunately for everyone's second favorite simp magnet, 
his fate was doomed from the start. The moment Chris Redfield and Ethan Winters got involved in his life, his fate was sealed. Either Chris kills him, or Ethan kills him, alliance or no. Every effort he made to change his own fate would have been met with the same conclusion. He would be paying for the sins that he engaged in in his factory, as well as his crimes against Ethan Winters, with his life. Like the philosophy of the physicist he takes his namesake from, Heisenberg's life would ultimately only have one possible conclusion, an ultimately deterministic one. No matter what we, the players, as Ethan, could have done, it wouldn't have changed a thing. Heisenberg's fate was sealed decades ago. But what do you think about the metallic lord of House Heisenberg? Do you think he could have possibly been convinced out of this toxic ideology? Do you think that he could have succeeded alongside Ethan? Do you still think Ethan was unreasonable in refusing Heisenberg merely for being a lord under Miranda? And ultimately, how do you feel about how the story played out with Heisenberg? I want to know all that and more in the comment section below, but for my part, I think he's a very interesting and complex character for the little bit of time we get to spend with him. And yes, that's despite all the yikesy roots that are uncovered when we chop down the tree of his character. At the end of the day, Heisenberg was a character influenced by the politics in his local region to believe in a failing ideology and then got roped up to be part of a religion in another area and was constantly warring against the hand life had dealt him. But the ways in which he tried to wage that war ultimately sealed his doom. Let me know if you'd like me to cover any of the other lords in Resident Evil Village. And if you liked the video, then maybe consider hitting the like button and subscribing. If you enjoyed this and you're already exhausted with my content, maybe try go checking me out over at Sunset City. It's a podcast I run with Game Apologist and Channel Pup, and we talk about Sonic the Hedgehog over there. But all in all, thank you all for watching, thank you for being here, and as always, insert end of video tagline here.